You walk into the kitchen with a clear purpose, but the moment you cross the threshold, your mind goes blank. You stand there, hand hovering over the counter, scanning the room as if the refrigerator or the toaster might whisper the answer to you, but there is nothing. It is just a silent, foggy void where your intention used to be. You eventually turn around defeated, muttering that it must just be part of getting older. But deep down, that moment sends a shiver of genuine fear through you. You worry that this isn't just a senior moment, but the first domino falling in a terrifying cascade toward losing your independence. We need to stop normalizing this experience. While our processing speed might naturally slow down slightly as the decades pass, the thick, persistent mental haze that makes it hard to focus, remember names, or follow a complex conversation is not a mandatory sentence of aging. It is a biological signal. Your brain is trying to tell you that its engine is struggling, not because the parts are too old, but because the fuel mix is wrong and the exhaust system is clogged. Here is the truth that standard checkups often miss. That brain fog is frequently the result of three specific physiological fires burning quietly in your body, metabolic dysfunction, chronic inflammation, and a failure of your nightly waste clearance system. The good news is that these are mechanical issues and mechanical issues can be fixed we are going to walk through exactly what is happening under the hood and, and more importantly, how we can clear the fog and bring your sharp, vibrant self back to the surface. Before we dive into the science that can change your trajectory, I want to welcome you here. If you are looking for health advice that respects your intelligence and focuses on adding life to your years, consider subscribing to our channel. We are building a community here dedicated to the kind of senior health tips that doctors often overlook in the rush of a 15-minute appointment. Um, I'd love to know uh, who I'm talking to today. So while you settle in, drop a comment below and tell me where in the world you are watching from. Now, let's begin with the first and perhaps most uh, pervasive culprit behind that cloudy thinking, which is the way your brain handles energy. We need to talk about the concept of type 3 diabetes. You might know that your brain is an energy hog. Despite weighing only about 2% of your body mass, it consumes roughly 20% of your daily energy intake. For years, we thought insulin resistance only mattered for your waistline or your pancreas, but we now know that your brain cells can become insulin resistant too. When this happens, neurons literally starve because they cannot absorb the glucose they need to fire. A landmark study published in the Times Journal of Alzheimer's Disease Times found a direct correlation here showing that insulin resistance significantly accelerates the formation of amyloid plaques, the sticky gunk associated with memory loss, and reduces cerebral glucose metabolism. Imagine trying to drive a high-performance sports car, but the fuel injector is blocked. No matter how much gas you put in the tank, the engine sputters. That sputter is your brain fog. To fix this, we have to resensitize your cells. This means looking at your carbohydrate intake with a critical eye. It is not just about cutting calories. It is about keeping your insulin levels low and steady so your brain cells regain their sensitivity to the fuel. Try swapping your morning toast or cereal for a high protein, high fat option like eggs and avocado for just three days and see if that morning haze doesn't start to lift. Moving directly from fuel to the environment your brain lives in, we have to address the silent fire of chronic inflammation. You know what it feels like when you have a swollen knee or a cut that gets red and hot? That is acute inflammation and it is helpful. But after 60, many of us suffer from inflammaging, a low-grade systemic inflammation that constantly simmers in the background. When this inflammation crosses the blood-brain barrier, it activates the brain's immune cells called microglia. Instead of cleaning up debris, these agitated cells start attacking healthy neural connections. Uh, a study from the Journal Times, Neurology Times, tracked over 6,000 older adults and found that those with high levels of inflammatory markers in their blood experienced a 24% steeper decline in memory, cognitive ability over a 10-year period compared to those with low levels. It is as if your brain is constantly stuck in fight mode, leaving no resources for higher level thinking. This often stems from the gut. If you are eating foods that irritate your lining, industrial seed oils, processed grains, excess of sugar, you are essentially leaking inflammatory signals straight to your brain. 
one of the most powerful moves you can make is to introduce distinct anti-inflammatory agents into your routine. Omega-3 fatty acids are the heavy hitters here. Think of omega-3 seconds as a fire hose for that brain inflammation. Aiming for a high quality fish oil supplement or eating fatty fish like salmon three times a week can dampen that fire and let your neurons communicate clearly again. This leads us naturally to the time when your brain should be repairing itself, which brings us to the critical mechanics of sleep. We used to think sleep was just the body resting, but we now know the brain is actually working its hardest when you are unconscious. In 2012, researchers at the University of Rochester Medical Center discovered something revolutionary called the glymphatic system. Think of this as a dishwasher for your brain. When you enter deep sleep, your brain cells actually shrink by about 60% allowing cerebral spinal fluid to rush through the gaps and wash away the metabolic waste and toxins that accumulated during the day. If you are sleeping six hours or less, or if your sleep is fragmented by apnea or bathroom trips, the dishwasher cycle never finishes. You wake up with a dirty brain. Uh, a study published in Times Nature Neuroscience Times confirmed that in older adults, the uncoupling of this deep sleep cycle prevents the clearing of toxic proteins directly leading to that heavy, groggy feeling and long-term retention issues. It is not just about getting rest, it is about taking out the trash. If you snore or wake up gasping, do not ignore it. Get tested for sleep apnea. And for everyone else, stop eating three hours before bed. Digestion requires a lot of energy and raises your core temperature, which prevents you from sliding into that deep, restorative wash cycle your brain is crying out for. If you are finding these connections between your body and your brain helpful so far, please take a second to hit the like button. It helps us get this information to other seniors who are struggling with these same scary moments. Now let's navigate to a factor that is almost entirely within your control, but is often ignored, hydration. As we age, our thirst mechanism becomes less sensitive. You might not feel thirsty even when your body is practically drying out. The problem is that your brain is roughly 75% water and it functions like a sponge. When a sponge dries out, it becomes hard and brittle. It cannot absorb anything. A study from the Times, Journal of Nutrition Times, highlighted that being dehydrated by just 1% to 2%, an amount so small you wouldn't even notice a dry mouth, was enough to cause measurable impairments in concentration, short-term memory, and alertness. You might be chasing expensive supplements or medications when the solution is quite literally coming out of your tap. The actionable advice here is simple but requires discipline. Do not wait until you are thirsty. Start your day with a large glass of water before you have your coffee. Coffee is a diuretic, and if you drink it while already dehydrated from eight hours of sleep, you are starting your cognitive day in a deficit. Let's shift gears to something that affects the physical structure of your memory center, movement. I know that after 60, knees ache and backs get stiff, making exercise less appealing. However, we need to reframe exercise not as weight management, but as brain management. Your hippocampus, the part of the brain responsible for forming new memories, naturally shrinks as we age, contributing to that. Why did I come in this room feeling? But aerobic exercise triggers the release of a protein called BDNF or brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Scientists often call BDNF miracle grow for the brain. A randomized controlled trial published in the Times Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences Times showed that older adults who walked briskly for 40 minutes, three times a week, actually increased the volume of their hippocampus by 2% over a year, effectively reversing the brain aging process by one to two years. Sedentary behavior is literally shrinking your processing power. You do not need to run a marathon. You just need to get your heart rate up slightly. A brisk walk, a swim, or even vigorous gardening can flood your brain with this fertilizer. If you are currently doing nothing, Start with 10 minutes today. Your brain will thank you immediately with better blood flow and clearer thoughts. Another massive contributor to brain fog that we often brush off as a personality trait is chronic stress and worry. When you are constantly stressed, your adrenal glands pump out cortisol. In short bursts, cortisol is great for survival. But when it drips into your system all day because of health worries, financial stress, or watching the news, it becomes neurotoxic. 
high levels of cortisol actually corrode the connections in the prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain used for executive function and decision making. A study conducted by researchers at the Yale School of Medicine found that chronic stress triggers a molecular switch that causes connections in the brain to atrophy, leading to loss of synaptic mass. This is why when you are stressed, you can't find your keys. It is not dementia. It is a cortisol flood. We have to be proactive about lowering this chemical tide. This isn't just about relaxing. It is about active downregulation. Techniques like box breathing, inhale for four, hold for four, exhale for four, hold for four, have been proven to physically lower cortisol levels within minutes. Incorporating just five minutes of this focused breathing into your morning routine can act as a shield for your brain against the stress of the day. We also need to look inside your medicine cabinet because sometimes the cure is causing the fog. Many common medications taken by seniors fall into a category known as anticholinergics. These include certain over-the-counter sleep aids, allergy medications, and bladder control drugs. These drugs work by blocking acetylcholine, a key neurotransmitter involved in learning and memory. Blocking this chemical is like cutting the phone lines in your brain. The messages just don't get through. A comprehensive report published in Time's JAMA Internal Medicine Asterisk, which followed nearly 3,500 seniors, found a strong dose-response relationship between cumulative use of these strong anticholinergic drugs and a higher risk of developing dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Even in the short term, they are notorious for causing confusion and sedation. I am not telling you to stop your medication. That is dangerous but I'm asking you to do an audit. Take your list of medications to your doctor or pharmacist and ask a simple question. Are any of these anticholinergic and could they be affecting my memory? They're often safer alternatives that don't come with the side effect of brain fog. Let's discuss a nutrient deficiency that mimics dementia so closely it is often misdiagnosed. As we age, our stomach acid becomes weaker, making it much harder to extract vitamin B12 from food. B12 is essential for the health of the myelin sheath, the protective coating around your nerve fibers that allows signals to move fast. When that coating wears down, signals slow to a crawl. Uh, a study from the, the Times American Journal of Clinical Nutrition Times found that nearly 40% of people over 60 have low to borderline B12 levels, and those with lower markers perform significantly worse on cognitive tests. Since B12 is found mostly in animal products and absorption is the issue, simply eating more steak might not fix it. You need to get your levels checked with a blood test. If you are low, a high quality methylated B12 supplement or even monthly injections can uh, be like flipping a light switch in a dark room. The clarity can return in a matter of weeks if this is your bottleneck. There is another use it or lose it factor that has nothing to do with biology and everything to do with connection. Loneliness is not just an emotional state. It is a physical risk factor for your brain. Social interaction is one of the most complex tasks your brain performs. It requires you to listen, interpret facial expressions, recall shared history, and formulate responses in real time. It is a massive workout for your neural circuits. When we isolate, those circuits weaken. Research from the Rush University Memory and Aging Project showed that highly social seniors had a 70% lower rate of cognitive decline compared to their less social peers. If you have retired and your social circle has shrunk, you must treat building new connections as a medical necessity. Join a book club, volunteer, or simply call a friend every day. Engaging with others keeps the firing patterns in your brain robust and complex. Finally, we have to talk about the sensory inputs that feed your brain, specifically your hearing. You might be wondering what your ears have to do with your memory, but the connection is profound. When you have untreated hearing loss, your brain has to work overtime just to decode sound. It reallocates resources from the memory and thinking centers just to understand what someone is saying. This is called cognitive load. A study from Times Johns Hopkins Medicine Times followed 639 adults for nearly 12 years and found that mild hearing loss doubled the risk of dementia and moderate loss tripled it. If you are constantly saying what, or turning up the TV, you are exhausting your brain's energy reserves on processing rather than thinking. If you suspect hearing loss, get it checked. Modern hearing aids are not just about hearing volume. 
they are about reducing the cognitive load on your brain so it can get back to being brilliant. Let's pause for a moment and look at the picture we have painted. We have covered insulin, inflammation, sleep, hydration, movement, stress, medication, nutrition, socialization, and sensory health. It can feel overwhelming, but I want you to see the empowering pattern here. None of these factors are inevitable consequences of the calendar. They are lifestyle factors. They are choices. To recap, here is your battle plan. First, cut the sugar and refined carbs to restore insulin sensitivity. Second, eat more omega-3 seconds to put out the inflammatory fire. Third, prioritize deep sleep by stopping food three hours before bed. Fourth, drink water before your coffee. Fifth, move your body to grow your hippocampus. Sixth, manage stress with breathing to lower cortisol. Seventh, audit your medications for anticholinergics. Eighth, check your B12 levels. Ninth, stay socially active. And 10th, check your hearing to reduce cognitive load. You do not have to do all of these tomorrow. Pick the one that resonated most with you, the one where you nodded your head and thought, yeah, that's me. Start there. This fog you are feeling is not the sunset of your intellect. It is a warning light on the dashboard. And because it is a warning light, it means there is still time to pull over, check the engine, and get back on the road. You have lived a life full of experiences, wisdom, and knowledge. That library is still there. The lights are just a little dim right now. By addressing these biological factors, we are simply changing the light bulb so you and the people who love you can access that wisdom again. Your independence is the most valuable asset you have. Fighting for your cognitive health is the best way to protect it. Do not accept the I'm just getting old excuse. Demand better for your brain because it is capable of repair, growth, and clarity even after 60 I want to leave you with a question to kickstart your brain right now. Out of the 10 points we discussed, which one are you going to tackle this week? Commit to it by writing it in the comments below. Writing it down is the first step to making it real. And if you found hope and logic in this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel because your health is worth fighting for, and we are going to fight for it together. Remember, the fog isn't you. The clear, sharp person you have always been is still right there waiting for the right conditions to shine. Let's get to work.